names of God. So the names of God today that we're going to be doing is actually El Roy. And this is the God who watches over me. So you are the God who watches over me. This is El Roy. El is a Hebrew word for God. And Roy, which is the R-O-I, is the one who sees. The one who sees. It's like kind of watching over us. All right. So um, we're going to start in Genesis 16. Okay, so Genesis, Genesis 16. Um, and this is the area where, um, this is when Abraham and Sarah, this was before their names were changed. God eventually changed their names, um, had made a covenant with them, actually made a covenant with uh, Abram, Abraham first, and then later on when he was getting ready to have his, uh, his son, he had made a promise to him and called him Abraham. So in the, me in the beginning it was Sarai, and Abram, and then eventually they became Sarah and Abraham, and so this, uh, God is really into names, um, when he changed somebody's name, there was a purpose for it, because that name meant something, so every time you spoke, um, like from Sarai, um, to Sarah, Sarah means princess, so every time then she was, uh, like, when God gave her that name, Sarah, then her name became Princess. And so it's every time her name was being spoke, it was like you were calling her Princess, Princess. That's why it's really important when we name our kids important names and not like dog names or we don't want to call our names like stupid names. Like, you, know, you don't want to call your, your boy, your, your, you know, your son or daughter, you know, Frito or you know, Rover or something like that, you know, the names do mean something, and, um, my name is April, so, um, my name actually means spring and open and, uh, like a renewal, so that's what my name means, um, you know, I'm very thankful that my parents named me April, and, because it is a good name, and, um, uh, but it does reflect, uh, my personality, or I kind of, as I was being called that, I kind of, like, grew into my personality. We have, a, I have a daughter that's like that. Her name is Lena and uh, Lena means peaceful and gentle. Well, when she was little, she was not peaceful and gentle, but it's interesting how she, as she grew, she kind of, kind of grew into it. Um, okay, so let's go to Genesis 16 and I'm just going to read this text first and then we'll go over it and we'll talk about um, okay, so Sarai, remember this was before God changed her name. So Sarai, Abram's wife, was not able to have children. She owned an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, okay, her husband, she said, The Lord Yahweh has kept me from having children. Why don't you sleep with my slave? Maybe I can build a family through her. Abram agreed with Sarah. Sarai. After Abram had lived in Canaan for 10 years, Ab Abram's wife Sarai took her Egyptian slave, Hagar, and gave her to her husband Abram to be his wife. He slept with Hagar and she became pregnant. Then Hagar realized that she was pregnant. She began to be disrespectful to Sarai, her owner. So Sarai complained to Abram, I'm being treated unfairly and it's your fault. I know that I gave you my slave to you, but now she is pregnant. She's being disrespectful to me. May the Lord decide who is right, you or me. Abram answered Sarai, Here. She's your slave. Do what you like with her. Then Sarai mistreated Hagar so much that Hagar ended up running away. So the messenger of the Lord found Hagar by a spring in the desert, the spring on the way to Suri. He said, Hagar, Sarai's slave, where have you come from and where are you going? Hagar answered, mm. running away from my owner, Sarai, the messenger of the Lord said to her, 
Go back to your owner and place yourself under her authority. The messenger of the Lord also said to her, I will give you many descendants. No one will be able to count them because there will be so many. Then the messenger of the Lord said to her, okay, this is what he said to Hagar, you are pregnant and you will give birth to a son. You will name him Ishmael, which means God hears. Names are very important. You will, have, you will name him Ishmael because the Lord has heard your cry of distress. He will be a free and wild as an untamed donkey. He will fight with everyone and everyone will fight with him. He will have conflicts with all his relatives. Hagar named, okay, now get this. The Lord did not name himself Elroy. Hagar named the Lord. She said, okay, Hagar named the Lord. Who has been speaking to her? She said, you are the God who watches over me. She said, this is the place where I watch the one who watches over me. This is why there is a, a well. It's an actual water well where she was able to get refreshed. Um, this is why the well that is there to this day is called uh, Bir Lahai Roy, which means the well of the living one who watches over me. It is still there to this day between Giddish and uh, Birud. And so, um, okay, Hagar gave birth to Abram's son, and Abram named him Ishmael. Um, Abram was 86 years old when Hagar gave birth to Ishmael. So also the, um, the age st time stamps are really, really important uh, when we're seeing chronologically what is going on. So who, you know, how old is certain people um, when we're looking at this. Okay, so, okay, so we, we read the text here. This is chapter 16. And so what do we have here? We have one, okay, the biggie that I really see that always jumps out in this whole situation is what did God tell you to do? What has God instructed you to do? Um, Sarai, Sarai jumped the gun totally. Um, God never told her um, to, you know, take your slave girl, your Egyptian slave girl, and go give her to your husband so he could have sex with her and have a baby. God never told her to do that. She came up with that whole idea, that brainstorm idea, all by herself. And it has caused deep problems and grief, even to this day. Um, God did pro give promises to Ishmael. Um, he, he did tell him that he would be a mighty nation, that he would have, you know, many, many descendants. Um, Ishmael was blessed. Um, because he, he was one of Abraham's sons, but he wasn't the son that God had promised that Sarah, that Sarah, that Sarah would have had. Um, she got ahead of God and tried to try to do, um, her own idea. And I'm telling you, every time we do this, we will jack things up like you would not believe. Do not get ahead of God. I've gotten ahead of God and my, it just, to this day, I pay dearly for my mistakes. And so God is grateful and gracious and he's merciful. So he, you know, when we beg for mercy, um, God does grant it. And um, uh, one thing is just, you know, trying to be obedient to God. You know, Lord, I really want to do what you want me to do. And um, so that's, so one thing I saw is just Sarai jumped the gun um, she, okay, God had promised her she would have a son, but she was thinking, oh, well, maybe this is how it's supposed to happen. It's supposed to happen through my, my Egyptian slave, Hagar. And so, okay, we're going to have babies that way because obviously I'm too old and my, you know, womb's probably all, you know, my uterus is probably all dried up and probably looks like a prune. But God had his uh, idea. He was going to get Sarah pregnant and well, through Abraham and so, okay, she, so Sarai, bad, bad decision. Sarah jumped the gun. Um, this is, this happens when we, in our sinful nature, in our flesh, we 
take things upon ourselves and we're going to, you know, make our own decision and not wait on God and be patient. Patience is, we've got to wait on God, be patient. Um, don't be buying that piece of property without consulting God. Don't be, you know, planning a, a baby. Even if you, if you want to start, you know, having, you know, kids or something, maybe, maybe you're, um, um, maybe you're taking birth control and because you're not really ready to have a baby yet, maybe, you know, you probably should be consulting the Lord. If you have a relationship with them, you definitely want to be consulting. God, when's your, when's your perfect time for us to have a family, start a family? You may want to be asking God that. Um, so, um, you know, just trying to really be listening to God and getting direction on things. Uh, before you, um, you know, jump the gun, try to, you know, out, out think them. Um, you know, me personally, um, you know, I, in my fleshly thoughts, um, I had married a man early, early when I was a, a early Christian back in my twenties. Um, I had married a guy, uh, did not consult the Lord. And just because he, he was a Christian check. Um, he went to church, check. Um, he, you know, he, you know, he was good looking, check, you know, kind of, you know, just those things. But God never told me that I could marry that guy. And I did it anyway, because I was jumping the gun and I thought, well, this is, this is a good idea. It kind of, you know, hits the check. Oh my gosh. Disaster. Absolute disaster from day one. Um, it just, yeah, I got, I got children out of it and my, I love my children dearly, but the marriage was, um, it was just years, 10 years of abuse, physical abuse, uh, mental abuse. Um, it, uh, didn't know that he was into, you know, drugs and, um, pornography and it, it was just, it was very bad. I made a bad decision and I did not consult the Lord. Um, okay, going back full circle to, um, going back to here to where Hagar, she, here she is. She's being mistreated by uh, Sarai. Uh, when, um, okay, and, it, and it's kind of tit for tat because um, Hagar, when she found out she's pregnant, she kind of got a little prideful, kind of like, and so she started being disrespectful to her master, Sarai. But then Sarah, then uh, Sarah, she then started becoming disrespectful to him, or her really bad. So she ended up running away. Now the Lord, this is the messenger of the Lord. Um, the Lord is really the one that that sent her back. She had to go back to Sarai, and there was a lot of reasons for that. God needed, um, uh, you know, needed her to to go. Uh, show herself, but the Lord cared for Hagar, even she, even though she was Egyptian, he did care for her, um, she was not Hebrew, you know, or anything like that, but, um, um, the Lord, the Lord really cared, and he did, you know, even though this was not really Hagar's decision, um, to, to, you know, start having babies with Abraham, or with Abram, um, the Lord did bless that baby Ishmael with with many many descendants. Now there was a lot of problems because the fighting. Um, he would be a person that would be in in conflict all the time. The re, his relatives would be in conflict. Um, to this day, um, Ishmael is actually where the Arabian uh, people would come from. Eventually, um, a, a religion would stem from it in um, sixteen in six hundred A.D which is, uh, Islam is, uh, you know, coming. And so th these people, um, they were always in conflict for thousands and thousands of years, um, always fighting with people. And so there was always that root generational curse in there, um, that, that it would just be, um, free and wild and would fight with everybody and, and, um, everyone would want to fight with him. And it was just this, this un, unrest, um, there was no peace in his descendants. These descendants didn't walk in the peace and uh, where they all got along. Um, 
So even to this day, we also we still see this in the Arabian people. There's still this element of of like agitation, um, and so that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, so Hagar is the one that ended up calling the Lord El Roy, and um, she saw how God was watching over her and that how much He cared for her. Um, and so this is also um, something that probably gave her the, the courage to go back and submit herself under the authority of her, um, uh, her master, and that would be Sarah, Sarai. And um, so um, later on, okay, so that's it for Elroy. So we'll, we'll end up, we're going we're gonna to keep on going down um, at Genesis here because the next one that we're probably going to do um, is going to end up being Jehovah Jireh, and that's where God provides the um, the sacrifice. And um, so we're kind of we'll, we'll just keep on going. And so God watches over us, and very very glad about that. I I am really glad that even when we make really bad decisions, um, when we we are in distress and we are like to the end of ourself and we just feel like we can't go in on anymore and we beg for mercy god please please help me please get me out of this situation what will happen is that he will give you grace and mercy and he will may not take the situation away he never took my situations away away but he did grace me through them so he he did he gave me a lot of grace and mercy um, as I walked through those situations, um, I'm very thankful for God to be doing that. Um, we have no idea all the things that, um, the protection that God, uh, you know, has over us and stuff. I mean, how many, you know, car accidents have we avoided? We don't even know about. And just where God is, you know, just watching over us and wanting the best for us. Um, but sometimes it means, uh, you have to go back. You have to go back to a situation um, that you know you were you were in to begin with, and God's like, you know what? You're gonna have to go back and submit yourself under that authority once again. But don't worry about it. I will be watching over you. So it will be a different situation um, where when God tells you to go do something, yeah, you want to obey it because you'll have His protection. Um, okay. And any comments, just put on the chat below and I will try to address them if I can. I love you all. Bye-bye.